Hello and welcome, it's Bushwhacker here with another Stationeers tutorial. On today's episode, I'm going to show you how to put together uh, my circuit for the perfect solar panel tracking. This is going to uh, very accurately track the motion of the sun across the sky and move your solar panels uh, so they're at about 99 to 100% efficiency throughout the day. Also, at nighttime, they're going to reset to the uh, starting position and it's going to uh, save a little power by actually save, uh, turning off some of these devices. Also, I'm going to show you guys how I set up my power system as well, uh, but the main point of this video is going to be for the solar tracking. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. For this solar panel uh, tracking system, uh, we're going to need just a couple things here. So we're going to need two kit sensors, we need two logic input outputs, we need IC housing along with a chip. Also we need the power uh, area power controller uh, with a large battery, the large battery is important. And we're also going to use a transformer in this build. Also, in order to program our integrated circuit, we are going to need a computer setup with an IC for programming. So let's grab our IC housing, seeing as this is really going to be the center of our system. And we're going to place it uh, on a block just like that. So it's going to be right in the center. And that's going to allow us to place our batch writers. So make sure that we put batch writers here. And we want another batch writer on the other side. So there we go, that is all of the logic that we're gonna need for this system. So now that we have our batch riders and our IC housing hooked up, we can grab our sensors. So the layout of these sensors is very important. So the one on the ground here, so I know that uh, you need to know your directions here. So the sun is setting right now, so we know that that is the west. So we know that this is north, east, south, west. So the one on the ground this is going to be our vertical sensor so we're going to place it with the connection facing south so that has a connection facing south that is very important and then directly above it we need this connection so this is going to be our horizontal connection and this is going to be uh, facing north so this will be north east so this one's connected south and west also very important for the system is we're going to have our data lines on the east side and we're going to have our power lines on the west side. Uh, so once you get this set up, uh, we can add our power system. So what we're going to do for this is we're going to take a transformer. And uh, the reason we're going to use a transformer is because these batteries love to draw a ton of power and the transformer will actually allow power uh, to be pretty much stolen before it gets to these batteries. And we want that because we want to be able to have this system run all the time without ever dying on us. So we're gonna put a transformer here. So that's gonna allow power when it's being generated uh, to go down here and not be stolen by the batteries first. Then we're gonna take our area power controller here. We'll connect this up. Now for this, we're going to need our large battery. The large battery is the smallest battery that you can use that will power the system all night long. And you absolutely want it powered all night long to get the most efficiency out of the system. Although if you're in a pinch, you can use a small battery, but it's not quite as efficient. So we can flip this on and we can close this up. Now the final thing we have to do over here is we can increase our power. We can just change it to 500 watts. I only think this draws about less than 100 so but that's good enough the light will not come on so don't worry about that uh, that's just because our yeah we're not generating power right now so that is the setup we need for our power uh, this is running down here and it's coming over to our circuit here uh, so this circuit is really all by itself other than you know connected to the data side of all the uh, panels over here uh, and it's isolated, so this is going to allow it to make sure that it has power at all times. The next thing we need to do is we need to grab our labeler. Uh, and then we need to label this one. So I told you before that this one is facing south and it's going to be our sensor vertical. So we'll say sensor vertical. 
There we go. And then up here, this can be our sensor horizontal. There we go. And we can turn this off. Uh, also, actually, we need to label these batch writers. Now, it doesn't matter which one's which, but when you label it, uh, it does. Uh, it is important later. So uh, we'll just call this one, we'll just keep the batch writer and we'll do horizontal. Oh, I forgot an I there. Horizontal. And this will be batch writer vertical. There we go. So batch writer horizontal, batch writer vertical. And that just uh, is going to tell you what variable that you're going to use later. But now this system is honestly pretty much set up. So what we need to do is grab our integrated circuit and we need to place it in our integrated circuit housing. Now we can go to our computer and we can press edit. And so I've created this uh, program, it's called Perfect Solar Tracking and you can, it's gonna overwrite the same thing. But I'm gonna link this uh, in uh, on the bottom of my video to the steam workshop so there'll be a link there where you can subscribe to this and it will show it uh, in here uh, when you guys are playing on your worlds so uh, I'll go over this really quickly first of all I put some notes so solar panel data east power west uh, label sensors and batch riders which we already did the batch riders uh, the input is IC type solar and then vertical horizontal we will do that in a minute here uh, sensor vertical is a daylight sensor and that's uh, right side up so it's going to be on the ground and this is going to be I'm going to change this to connected connect north and then this one is going to be connect south yeah I think that's a little bit better wording so this is upside down and it's connected uh, we connected it to the south so I'm actually going to save that really quick. So I can go to library. So this is how you save and you're just gonna override that guy. Just so you guys don't get confused at all. So now I'll go over this really quickly, uh, definitely not in depth. Uh, so we're writing all of our uh, devices and our registers there. Uh, one important thing here is our sensor horizontal. Uh, the sensors are always, or they start in mode zero. Uh, so that, uh, that just means that it is, uh, actually looking at the vertical mode. If you change it to mode one, it looks at the horizontal mode. So we're changing uh, these to allow our sensors to read the right variable. We're gonna turn our uh, batch writers off there. And then we're gonna do a quick check. So if the sun is up, uh, we're gonna continue down and I'll go to what this reset means in this moment. So I'll just pretend the sun is up. So we're gonna see okay the sun is up and then we're going to come down here we're going to calculate our vertical angle then we're going to set the ic so if you set db that means the ic itself gets set to the angle and then it's going to turn on the batch writer for vertical and then it's going to wait a second and then it's going to turn off the batch writer for vertical and so then it's going to write that to that batch writer just for a second but that's enough time for that batch writer to put the solar panel in the right orientation. Then again, we're gonna load the solar angle again. Uh, we're gonna turn on the horizontal batch rider, then we're gonna wait, and then we're gonna turn off the batch rider. So it's gonna alternate between uh, vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, and it's gonna write the correct values to uh, the right uh, direction, so horizontal or vertical. Uh, in your solar panels. And it's gonna follow them, like I said, with about, uh, you know, 98 to 100% efficiency. So one thing that I wanted to do here was to have it reset at night. So let's just say it's nighttime. So that means the solar angle is uh, gr uh, greater than 92 degrees. So if it's nighttime, what it's gonna do, it's gonna come down here to its reset mode. And then it's going to uh, set the solar panels up so that they're ready for the next morning. And this running variable here just means that this uh, reset line is gonna run once, it's gonna move uh, this variable to one so then up here it doesn't run it a second time. So it sets it to its correct orientation and then it just turns the whole system off until the angle here is again greater than 92 degrees. So what we can do now is we can confirm this and we're gonna export it to our housing here. So we can look at it. 
Uh, lately in Stationers, I've been getting unknown errors at lines for some reason, but they always seem to work still. So we're going to place this in here. And before we start it up, we want to grab our screwdriver and we know this is our batch writer horizontal. So like I said in my code, and if you need to double check it, you can. So the input is IC housing, the output type is the solar panels, and the output variable, this is the horizontal one, so we will set it to horizontal. And you don't need to turn that on because the IC housing is gonna turn it on itself. So we're gonna read IC housing, we're gonna do output type, and this will be solar panel, and output variable, this time it's gonna be vertical. So now, because it's nighttime, uh, this system is actually just going to reset itself right now. So uh, the second that I turn this guy on, oh, sorry, I forgot to, one second. The last thing that we need to do is set these. So we need to grab our vertical sensor. So sensor vertical, this one needs to be our sensor horizontal. It's usually easier to do this without all the solar panels connected so you don't need to scroll through all the stuff. The next one is gonna be our batch writer vertical. So batch writer vertical. And this will be our batch writer horizontal. So scroll all the way there. There we go. So now I will close out of this menu here and we'll turn it on. And there we go. It, so what you saw there is what it does at night. It wrote the vertical once and it wrote the horizontal once. And now the solar panels moved around to their orientation that is correct for the morning. So I'll wait until morning time and I'll be back with you guys uh, when this thing starts up again. Okay, the sun is uh, about to rise here, so I'll just start uh, talking to you guys again here. So uh, by this uh, housing not turning these batch writers on at night, it doesn't save a ton of power, but it doesn't cost any more to write a little bit of code. So it probably saves you enough to run a couple lights through the night which is uh, better than uh, not having that power at all uh, for no reason. So once uh, the sun here gets to 92 degrees, so that's actually gonna be two degrees below the horizon, uh, these batch riders are gonna start up again. Uh, and then there, and there we go. So now they've started up and they've started writing the solar panels to what they need to be. And as you can see, my orientation in the morning uh, was pretty much perfect, so they don't have to move a whole lot before that sun gets up. So now they're all starting to uh, <clears throat> get power, and then once that sun uh, comes completely above the horizon, it's gonna go, the efficiency is going to go up to, again, around 98 to 100%. So while this is running, um, I'm gonna show you guys how I set up um, the rest of my stuff here. So what you can see is I'm bringing in the power here, it goes to that transformer, which makes sure this battery's charging. And as you can see, this light doesn't turn on, but this is flashing blue and green. So that means that battery's charging. Uh, so all the power is coming into the back of these large batteries here. Uh, you can't see this heavy cable down here because I put some grating down, but it's coming into the back there. And then what I did, and this system is really going to be very difficult to blow a wire. So on this side, we are also having heavy cable coming out. So you can draw a lot of power from the system as well. And then one way to also ensure that you're not going to blow wires and to save um, the cost of these large wires, which requires gold, which is uh, a little difficult to get. It's certainly not uh, impossible, but if you try, if you want to save gold, you might as well. Uh, so that comes in here, and uh, the power out from all of these comes into these transformers here. And these small transformers are perfect because their maximum wattage allowed is only 5,000 uh, watts or 5 kilowatts. So that means that only 5 kilowatts can flow through here. So if you try to put more than 5 kilowatts through here, it's going to limit it at 5 kilowatts. And that just so happens to be the limit of these wires. So the only way that you could uh, blow something in the system is if you had a ton of these transformers and you drew too much power with this large cable Which would be very very difficult to do. So this is a very safe system 
So the power is coming out to these three transformers, which is coming to these three lines. So you can separate these lines throughout your base. So I have a yellow line here. That yellow line is going out to my computer. You have a line that goes to this arc furnace and some lights. And I have this red line, which is powering a bunch of logic here. So let's take a look and see exa exactly what I have going on here. So I just created a little wall, uh, and this is certainly not required, but it's kind of nice to have. So up here, this is my power generated. I labeled all of them. So this is the current output of the solar panels. So we're getting 6.8 kilowatts from our 15 or so panels. Over here is our battery charge level. And you can see, yeah, we're at 0.999 or pretty much 100% there. So if you start, uh, uh, you don't have to come over here and you know kind of figure out well this one is halfway charged you can just look at this and this is going to tell you the average charge of all the batteries down here i created some lines for uh some displays for these lines here so i have a bunch of logic running on my red line as you can see um, and it's a lot of it's hidden under there. Also, all these signs are running off there. So line one, our red line, is using 360 watts. Our line two, which is our white line that goes to these lights in the arc furnace, is using 105 watts. And line three, which goes to the computer, is using 250. Now, why don't I show you why I put these transformers in here? So one thing is when you're building your base, you might uh, want to wire something up you know with the yellow line and it starts getting pretty high and you might realize you need to get more power over there so uh, this display will let you know hey I'm at four kilowatts maybe we need to power something in this area with a different line so we're not going to use too much power but let's do something that would be uh, if you're using these wires normally, very horrible to do. So, uh, but I've certainly done things very similar to this. So this is uh, an example of trying to overdraw these wires. So right here, I have a station battery. These station batteries right now are pulling in, you know, 6.8 kilowatts, which is more than enough to blow one of these smaller lines. That's why I have the big line there. But these batteries will pretty much draw as much power as you can throw at them and they will try to. So let's throw this in here and see what happens. Okay, so now we need to turn it on and let's draw some power. Okay, you can see these lights turned off, but this battery's still on. So that means that we didn't break any wires, but we can come over here and we can see that we're using five kilowatts of power. That's because our transformer is only allowing us to draw the maximum amount of power from this line which is this battery. So now that we know we're drawing five kilowatts and we see that stuff is off, that means that, okay, we're drawing too much power probably from this line. So you'd either, again, want to take a large line over to this or something of that nature. But the good news is we didn't blow any of our wires. So uh, we can just realize that we made a mistake, you know, pick this up and, you know, go about our day. It will turn stuff off, but it won't blow your wires, so that's good to know. And especially if you're running wires through walls or uh, inside of these frames, you really do not want to have a wire uh, break and not know where it is. So that's a very important uh, safety system. Hopefully you guys really enjoyed this video. Like I said, I'm going to leave the uh, program file uh, on the Steam Workshop, and I'll leave a link for that below. Also, um, I'm gonna try something new. Let's, uh, if I get, let's, uh, let's do 50 likes on this video. We're gonna try and get 50 likes. I will publish uh, this world uh, to the Steam Workshop as well. So if you guys want to see this world, maybe experiment around, maybe look at uh, my code or how I wired this stuff up, uh, let's try and shoot for 50 likes. And again, if you haven't subscribed, please do that as well. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Hopefully I'll see you again next time. Bushwaka out.